he's still got some some wear and tear left on the tires for sure. By the way, Matt's flagging wear and tear still left on the tires as a as not a phrase. That's not a phrase. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think it is. You're you separate right. it, and it's a it's a compound <laughs> phrase that negates itself. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, baby, that's right. It's Chris Sims unbuttoned, and that's right. You can't button up my mouth and my horrible English. Nobody is more horrible at English than Chris Sims. Wear and tear on the tire. I guess I was trying to say yeah. tread on the tire. Yeah, there's you still, still more got tread. tread on the tire. It was you still yeah. you got a lot of wear and tear in your favorite red pants you like to wear on the podcast. It's there been a the- while since we've seen them. <laughs> there's some wear and tear, but there's some tread left on them. You're good to go. They were the only pants I could wear today. They were the only pants you could wear. No, huh? no, no. Well, because I was gonna wear this blue pair. Right. And I've got like this navy blue pair. Right. But I was like, it's my first time back. Yeah. And I'll be back most Mondays now. Right. Uh, Paralympics are done. Thank Olympics you. Olympics are done. Thank you. So I was like, my first Give me show my host back. back. My first show back. I was like, I have no choice. I have to wear the red pants, and they were wrinkly. Had to throw them into the dryer for a little bit. My little, wife did that. You did a little like the uh, sprinkle the water on she it. She did. Throw it in the dryer. Yeah. yeah, it's a big move. That's I'm I'm a big fan of that. Because move. as a guy, I go ah. Crap! I was like they're wrinkly, yeah. but like we, I just like, well, looks like I'm gonna have to wear wrinkly pants. Yeah, you that's know? right. Just, I, I do <laughs> it no. all the time. I'll get a shirt and go, oh, it's wrinkly, but who gives a damn? <laughs> yeah, they're only gonna see from my chest up on looks TV. Like that's my fate today. <laughs> I'm gonna be wrinkly, and oh. then she's like, why don't we just spritz it with water and throw it in the dryer? So yeah. I was like, all right, let's do that. It is a magical move. It, it is. is a magical move. I'll do it at the hotel too. Like the hotel got like now you got to do it a different way because of course you don't have a washer and dryer. Yeah. In your so room. what do you do? Well, you like. You put on the water in the shower yeah. and make it steamy in there Ooh. and then hang up the shirt in there. Yeah. There's an old trick I learned in my college days where, yes, you know, so you know, not that I do it a lot, but every now and then you got to break out that trick on the road too. a night before going out. Because I know from the college days you do laundry and then you wad up all your clean clothes into a ball. That's yeah, basically and then it's do. time to go out, and you're like, oh, crap, I didn't do it. All my clothes are wrinkly, and I'm not going to iron this. What the hell, an iron? No who way. Who has an iron, yeah. Yeah, who does that still? Jeez. Uh, uh, also, when I came in today. Yeah, I had kind of a, big time. Look I had you. a shirt on the back of my chair. Right. And you pointed it out to me. Yeah. And Pete has hooked me up. He's done me a solid. He's welcomed me back with open arms and with a T-shirt. And it will be my new favorite T-shirt now because my team won the Super Bowl. Ladies and gentlemen. If you're just listening, it's a T-shirt with the Rams logo in Detroit Lions colors. It says Detroit Rams. Yeah, it look, I, like, I kind of like the look. Taking full credit. Hey, take it. You guys got to take it where fan, you can get it. You that know? is our Super Bowl. Our ex-quarterback won a Super Bowl banner. will be hanging up in Detroit soon. Oh, yeah. There's a, there's our some Lions. Ex-super, right. Our ex-quarterback won a Super Bowl. So Pete points out here that that Rams logo, I mean, it definitely does have shades of the Detroit oh, Lions. it does in have it the too. lion body. Yeah, it's lion, the lion with the Rams head. Ram head, Detroit Rams. All right. All right. Taking full credit. We're hanging that good. banner. That's our cool. Old That's another one. good one. Your wife didn't make that one. That's made by somebody no, else. No, but I still do have to wear it. Wear my Chris Sims unbuttoned I t-shirt. I mean, for a guy the... that hasn't been here in a while, he was more I worried know. about his red pants than the <laughs> show he's going to be on we'll get there we'll get to the we'll get to the chris sims i'm starting to wonder if the shirts are even real (laughs) i don't even know they're real i mean were they just like did you guys you on your vacation do some photo shopping and i don't know it's questionable you don't know we're not sure i don't blame you for being skeptical we have to send it to an arbitration case and see if it's real (laughs) get roger goodell on it (laughs) uh okay now i'm back we have a huge day yes because we do have huge news. We pushed the pod back a day. Right. Because we have free agency news. We didn't want all that news to be breaking while we were recording the pod. Although I do hope that we get some breaking news on the pod here today. I would think we will. And if we do, I ask Kristen, I go, do we have like a sound or anything that can signify breaking news on the pod? And she goes, yeah, we do. Crystal used his mouth. Right. She knows. She's heard it before. She would go, well, why would I download this when Chris is so good at going, do, 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 do. Yeah, exactly. Do, 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 do. I guess that's ABC. I shouldn't use that song there. That's all right. We can all take right. it. We'll we make it our own. I don't know if we can. It's copyright infringement. Okay. NBC they, they can't, can't do ABC stuff, You're right? right? All right. I, I refuse to. Bleep that it's out. It's like the Giants like taking a Cowboys theme song. We don't do that. Okay? Can't do it. Can't, can't do it. Do it. Can't but do we it. do have news. Like, all right, first off. Huge news. Like, so, free agency, we know. Yes. All right. 
Yeah. I think we would be remiss to talk about, like, first off, just off the bat, that Tom Brady's coming back to play football. Yeah, okay, so where, what, what, have we, what have we not talked about on this podcast? Have well, we not? I know. It's, well, we haven't hit that because yeah. that happened this happened weekend, over the weekend, right? All right. And, and I said, I've, I've been saying for a long, long time here, and, and still, like, listen, I, this has been all over the place, and it's been all over the place because of Brady a little bit. Yes, I never thought he was going to retire a month before the season was ending. Never, right? Then all of a sudden the retirement talk comes out, and you go, oh, wow, I mean, I guess it's real. I guess he's really done. But then within like five or six days, of course, Brady talks himself into a corner, his own corner, or a corner, and you're like, okay, well, maybe he's not done. And I said last week with Florio, I had talked to somebody that kind of had knowledge of the situation, and they were a little bit, you know, they, they know Brady's camp a little. And he's like, Brady's told everybody he's playing to 45. So he kind of called me to set me straight because he had heard me on TV. Yeah. He's like, Brady's not the type of guy that tells people those things and doesn't come back and play, let alone – you know, of course, I had already had the inkling, and you missed this, where, you know, Brady and Sean Payton tried to finagle away to go down and be a package deal. And, right. And I was, that was the last time I was here. Last time? Yeah. Okay. So that was a real thing. And I really think that, it, really, my heart of hearts, and I think we'll get the truth of this as eventually, is uh, I really think this was all a play for Tom Brady to try to play somewhere else. And then he realized that was not going to happen, so then he went back to Tampa Bay. If you're truly going to retire, what was the point of announcing it so quickly after the season was over. Why not take some time? You don't know how you feel. You told me you don't know how you're going to feel in five weeks, in a month, in a six month. So why wouldn't you, right? So to me, that's, again, I'm glad he's back. It's awesome. Why wouldn't he come back? The Tampa Bay Buccaneers are still one of the best teams in the NFC, and the NFC is sucky-ducky. Every good quarterback in football is in the AFC. I mean, Brady looking at it going, damn, I'm on the Bucs. I got a worry about Rodgers and the Packers. I got to worry about the Rams and who's ever playing quarterback with the 49ers and I can go back to the Super Bowl. This is amazing. So because of all that, he's back and that is cool. And I, I do like to see it. I really do. So what does this mean when Adam Schefter, remember that the yeah. report that Tom Brady was retiring before Brady made it official? Right. And it was like, ooh, is Schefter going to be right or wrong? And then it was like, ah, he was right. Turns out he was wrong. He well, <laughs> he was right and he was wrong. He was right but and it, he was. It, it, so, yes, so, I, I just I, I I have a hard time believing yes. again, and I know the the Dolphins thing's real. I know, as I've been saying, and you know the Dolphins. Nobody knew about this, and then Flor and then Florio called down to the Dolphins. They said, "Well, actually, we have reached out to Sean yeah, Payton." Right. So that was real. You know, you could say what you want. And the NFL squashed Payton and Brady from going down there, and then yes, after that. You know, so that, that leads yeah. me to believe that it was never a real retirement. Got it was it. a retirement to finagle his way to a different situation. I don't know what the other situation would have been other than Miami. I do think it's very odd, as I've said many times on PFT, that he was in San Francisco the week Shanahan was not at the Combine and decided to stay home. That, to me, was f***ing weird. That, to me, I, I would not be shocked if there was a conversation there or a little dabbling of the situations there to see what happened. And yeah. then, then he realized, okay, I think the I, – I don't know. And, I, you know, I, I think the Bucks realized, like, we're not going to just let you play for any team and just, like, oh, you, you gave us our mid-round picks. So Thanks. you think that's what it is? You think he thought that he would, had more power to leverage think, himself yes, out of there? I do. I do. And I think it turned against him a little bit and things didn't quite work out the way he wanted them to or whatever. If Flores' lawsuits – certainly put a big hand damper on some of the things I think that wanted to go down in Miami. And yes, I think that's ultimately, I think he was looking for other options. I and do. The, the last time we talked to you indicated there may be some issues between him and Bruce Arians. Yes. I, I mean, I, I know that there's, I think some frustration there. I don't think it's enough to where it was like, Oh no, I can't ever go back to work with the guy ever again. Yeah. I think there was frustration. Yes. But you know, I've been led to believe that it's not to the point to where it's like, Oh no, I can't ever play for the guy before or uh, ever again. Yeah. I don't think it's that. I don't. And again, you know, hey, I know they've lost a few players here, but again, the Bucks, yeah, they lost their guard in Kappa. It's still a really good offensive line. They lost Ali Marpet, you know, but they're so they're gonna some some moves they're gonna have to make there. But they're still got two really good tackles, an elite center, you know, running backs. Okay, it's not special, but it's good. We know the receivers are special. I expect Gronk to be back. The defensive line is still one of the best in football. They got good linebackers. They got two good, you know, a good safety. Carl, they got good corners. I mean, the, the Bucks are still a major player in this whole thing. All right. So last yeah. thing, do you think this really is it now? Do you think he ends up playing for the Bucks or conspiracy theory? This was the only way the Bucks said that they could do it is if everyone believed he wanted to stay with the Bucks. Because if he's like, I want to come back, but I don't want to play here, 
And it's tough, right? How are you going to get a fair trade for them? That's true. That's a conspiracy theory. It is a conspiracy theory. That has theory. not been backed by facts. I wouldn't buy that. I mean, I guess the thing is, it's just I don't think there's anything out there that you look at to go, oh, well, that makes sense, and that's a better option than where he is. 49ers. Yeah, the 49ers, right, which I, I would be thinking that something changed there. And the big thing there, too, is, I mean, again, like even if let's just pro play the game and go, the Bucks were willing to be nice. The Glazier family, thank you, Tom, for coming down here for two years to do it. Well, we will trade you. As cool as they are as people, I still don't think they're going to go. Okay, we'll trade you to the one team that might be able to beat us in the NFC Championship game this year, and like we'll have it thrown in our face. Like one of the only teams that physically we feel like is kind of comparable to us, we'll give you our quarterback so you can come in and beat our ass in the playoffs. That to me, as nice as they are, they're not going to be that nice. And that's where I think plans fell through. Now, I don't know that some of those things you know, but I do know Dolphins things. Yeah. And I do know a few other things, but yeah, just found it interesting. And hey, nonetheless, Brady's back and he's certainly on one of the best teams in the NFC. What else haven't we talked about? Russell to Denver, Aaron Rodgers coming back. That stuff's been talked about. Yeah. We, we, we hit all we hit all of that. I, I will say with uh, you know again with Russell Wilson and, and it seems like the current state of Rogers' contract here. I so I think Denver got a blessing in disguise. The fact that Rogers said no to them and went back to Green Bay and they got to go to Plan B to Russell Wilson. They got something to build here. R Aaron Rodgers. It looks like the contract's going to be set up in Green Bay to where he can basically get out of it after one year, two year, three year, whatever he wants. And if you're Denver and you're trying to build something, you don't want that as your quarterback right now. Mm -hmm. They got Russell Wilson now. They don't have to worry about that stuff they'll give him a new contract sometime here in the next year and a half and they'll have their quarterback for the next five six seven years question is how long russell will be good too I mean, that's yeah the one question yeah, it's russell still Wilson. it's not it's still it's gonna be good for a while yeah. how great will it be that that'll be maybe it wasn't something great to talk at the about. end of last year no no it was a weird year though it was a weird year it was a weird year all right it was a weird day of free agency some of the teams that maybe we didn't expect to make big moves made yeah. big moves and uh one was the jacksonville jaguars we'll get to them but i think the big one that we want to start with a team that was just a few uh inches away plays away from being a playoff team last year the chargers Huge player on day one of free agency, um, and so uh, let's let's just start with their big splash, yeah, JC Jackson, mm -hmm. and and how we're going to do this too is the homies have populated our Google document yeah, with go, a homies. lot of questions Good. on free agency, so we'll kind of hit the big news at the same time hitting the questions from you guys, the homies out there. Thanks again for that, Keith Hart. Saying part of the thirty three percent. That was back in your bleacher report. It was, days, right? I know. When I see people uh, sometimes I go, damn, I don't it's not the same podcast. We haven't really brought that up, but they bring it up. I love it. percent follow the pod. He goes, Is JC Jackson a top five cornerback in your position, uh, in your opinion? Who else do you put in that group? So let's just start there. Yeah. JC Jackson, is he top five and how much does he change that Chargers defense? He big time change. Brandon Staley, when I talked to him at the combine, we had a long talk about, you know, again. Uh, think about this. The Chargers were playing Gus Bradley Seattle scheme defense. 4-3, smaller, let's be fast, let's shoot gaps. Brandon Staley's come from the Vic Fangio, you know, Wade Phillips. So, wait, it's 3-4. I like big people up front. I need some versatility within that front there. It's a different animal altogether. He talked about how the personnel did not match up with what he wants to do scheme-wise. He needed to make changes. He's very creative in what he does in the back end and coverage. He asks his guys to it, – it's complicated. And then, and of course, at times he'll put a guy like J.C. Jackson on an island and then do other crazy stuff on the other side of the field like he did with Jalen Ramsey with the Rams two years ago. He's really cool with that. J.C. Jackson, for my money, is, is a top-five corner. And, hey, you see the list here for, like, top – Intercept, inter, uh, intercepted passes the last few years. Yeah, since 2018, he's on the top with 25. You've got Xavier Howard with 23, Justin Simmons 17. So, J.C. Jackson, as far as in, that is not always indicative of how good you are as a yeah corner. It's not. It's not. You're right. But you do like to have the picks. Though, well, the, and it's fair. <laughs> this one's fair. Yeah. It, it's like it's just like you know, just like we're seeing there with Xavier Howard, to where you go. No, no, it's fair. It's not like balls have been tipped and just damn, he's got the luckiest shamrock in the world up his ass yeah. to to make that happen. Uh, no doubt. I think he is without question. I don't want to want to pull up this little list I had here. He is without question one of the five corners to me. All right, and you know. That list, people want to know. All right, so Xavier Howard, J.C. Jackson, certainly there. Jair Alexander would be in that list for me. Marlon Humphrey, Jalen Ramsey, um, Marshawn Lattimore. 
right? Those are the those are the guys I think right off the top of my head that I put in that rare category of I go, you can put them on an island against the other team's best receiver and go, yeah. we know the other receivers going to have a few catches, but we're, we're going to be okay. And it allows us to do other things on the other side of the ball. That, that to me, that group right there that I mentioned, I think kind of stands on its own right now in and, football. And players like that don't always come available. No, right? they, exactly you, you right. You might need to trade for them and you got to give up a lot of draft capital. They gave up a lot of money for them. What is that? $82.5 million. But... I mean, that's you, you, these guys don't come around well, or, or aren't on the free market. I, I, yeah, exactly right. They don't come out on the free market. I, I honestly thought he would get more average, average, you know, mm. uh, per year as far as salary. I thought he would dance around the twenty million dollar year. He's gonna get twenty million for the first two years. But J.C. Jackson is special like this, just like Xavier Howard is a little bit, and even uh, Jair Alexander. They're not only elite man-to-man cover corners, they're elite zone co- cover corners too. They really understand how to play zones and you know where their weaknesses are, how to read plays, how to read the quarterback while you're reading the play at the same time. That's where they're special. And th- that to me is where J.C. Jackson and Xavier Howard separate themselves is because they, they can kind of – they got more instincts maybe than some of the other guys in that, in that zone department that makes them uh, very dangerous. It is a remade defense. You got Khalil Mack now, who they traded a second round pick and a sixth round pick next year Huge. for. You got the defensive tackle from the Rams, Sebastian Joseph Day. People he's familiar with here, both of them. Khalil yes. Mack, he was in Chicago with. He needs a guy to be the 3 4 outside linebacker, the 4 3 defense, and when it's nickel. Sebastian Joseph Day was in them, with them in the Rams, right? We talked about their defense. They need versatility up front. Sebastian Joseph Day is one of those guys that could be like nose tackle. And a 4-3-3 technique. So that, again, fits the mold of what Brandon Staley's kind of looking for on that side of the ball. So with that in mind, those moves in mind, Charger Man 89 says with J.C. Jackson going to the Chargers and those other moves there, where would you rank their defense going into the 2022 season? How much of a jump do you think they made? Well, I, listen, I also like they got Austin Johnson, defensive tackle, right? Uh, from the, the, he was in the Giants last year yeah. from Penn State. Another, you know, that, that's again a 3 4, no true nose tackle type. He's in a two gap, people. You can't move him. We got a whole mosh pit in the middle of our run game because of it. So they have. You know, I think two things. One, Brandon Staley's a really good coach and smart and knows how to coach the defensive side of the ball. I don't think it was an easy, like, uh, uh, what do I want to say? Adjustment learning curve from going the Gus Bradley Seattle three to wait. There's only three defenses in this defense, and we know all the rules within it. To now it's whoa, it's Brandon Staley, and he's got a ton of different defenses, and it's a little more complicated, and we do a lot more different things on the defensive side of the ball. Right. I think there's a learning curve, lack of the personnel. You're matching that up again. I'm not going to sit here and just make a proclamation to go, oh, they're going to be a top five defense in football yeah, next year. Do we year. have the ranks? Have we shown that yet, Kristen? Yeah, but they they're going to be – they were they, – their run defense was the worst so in football last points year. Points allowed was bad, 29th in football. There aren't many more teams than right. that. Uh, pass yards allowed, they're mid-pack, yeah. 12th. Yeah. Rush yards allowed per game, 30th. Yeah, well, he wants to play coverage – and then find ways to finagle fronts to where he can make it disruptive and yet they don't compromise themselves on the back end with being too aggressive with a blitz or crazy coverages that way. All right. And so yes, they're gonna be I would be shocked if they don't make a huge change on on that side of the ball as far as points you know, per game what they goes, are. goes from twenty ninth in the league right. to what? So like I'm gonna I'm gonna put them like in the top half of football for sure. You'd put them above fifteen. Yeah, above 16. I am. I'm going to say like almost everything. Their 23rd ranked defense overall in total yards last year. Yeah, I, I'm going to say they will be in the top 15 next wow. year. I do. Between learning the system, getting a few players, like I said, that fit the system, I think you'll see a big jump. Some young guys they had, Asante Samuel, he'll be a year better. Derwin James got banged up a little bit last year. He'll be a year better. You know, middle linebacker, the kid they got two years in the draft from Oklahoma, that was a big adjustment for him. He was in a defense where he was just like, the guy just said, I have to worry about this guy. And now Brandon Staley's teaching him, like, you got to read this and read this and read this, and then you go to that guy. Like Kenneth and Murray. So, that yeah, Murray, exactly. Yeah. Kenneth Murray, thank you very much. So, yeah, they they uh, I, I I expect a huge jump, I guess is what I'm saying. Okay, huge jump. Some yeah. of that is is it depends on the offense, too. You go for fourth and one at your own. 
10. Well, you're, you're right. give up some points that We've way. talked about that a lot, right? <laughs> so yeah. That could, that could affect some of the numbers at the end of the day, but as far as a quality defense, they've, yes. they've made some, some steps up. And on the offensive side, you know, they made sure that Mike Williams wasn't going anywhere, three years, 60 million. Big, but the biggest, the, the start of their free agency, that was huge right there. So now you don't even have to worry about the offense. You yeah. got that done and you go, wait, offense is good. Keep we literally guys. don't have to worry about it for the rest of free agency or the draft. Anything we get is almost icing on the cake. You mm-hmm. know, they got everything you need. The offensive line was greatly improved improved last year we know the quarterback you know so maybe they got to figure out how they get a tight end in the mix because they're going to lose jared cook all right uh but the receiver certainly set running backs they're not bad they i bet you they look for somebody else to get in the mix there but they can now focus just defense really for the most part and really make their team kind of special so the question did they do enough we have our friends over at points bet who have the odds of the afc west before and after yesterday so odds to win the AFC West, according to points bet, you got Kansas City, the Chiefs were the favorites, minus 175. Now today, plus 110. The Chargers were plus 400. Now they're plus 275. The same as the Denver Broncos, who went from plus 400 to plus 275. And this is all bad news for the Las Vegas Raiders, although... They're not that far behind either, plus 1,000. So they still got a chance. Good division. They got, they'll make moves next week. You know, the Raiders are going to follow the New England mantra where they're, you know, it's Wait free, it out, agency. free agency doesn't start to the second week. That's sure. how they kind of look at it for the Makes most sense. part. Other than last year, that was the only year ever we saw New England be aggressive in the first two days of free agency. And they had some major things they addressed. And that's what I think we saw today or yesterday. Is you know, you saw the teams that had some desperate needs to f- flip over the perception yeah. of the team, the roster, whatever. They made Made those moves the Chargers were one of those because like you're yeah. saying they're they're on the cusp they got a lot you like they were almost in the playoffs and you know they're in a tough division but you know again if you made me rank that division right now I'd put the Chargers two I'd make the Chiefs one I'd give the Chargers a little lead over the Broncos and what they are as a football team right now and then the Raiders four yeah Pete wants to know if you're betting would you take the Chiefs over the field would mm. you take if you could combine the Chargers chances and the Broncos and the- <sighs> Raiders, would you still take the Chiefs? Over, mm. Makes mm. it close. It would make me think. It would make me think about it. I, I probably wouldn't. Mm, I don't know. Just AFC West concern. Yeah, I might actually. Actually, now that yeah. I think about it, AFC West only. Yes, I would. Yep, AFC would. in general, I'm not going to do that. But yes, AFC West. I am, but that gap is closing. It's closing. I mean, it's it's one where you you definitely go. Oh, I'm not as comfortable as I was a year or two, three yeah. years ago, where you just went. It's a slam dunk. We're talking one or two wins go opposite directions. That's right. The Chargers are the exactly division right. champions. Exactly right. Yep. I mean, we're talking if Brandon Staley doesn't ultra aggressive on the night he plays the yeah. the Chiefs. Yeah. You know, and I asked him point blank. I did not shy away from that question. I did not. And he was like, he Here gave we go. good Here answers. We go again. Yeah, he gave good answers. He did. He's he's not doing it. By just flipping a coin. Did you do your voice where you're like, do we follow the numbers? Ooh, whatever the numbers go, say. Go, analytics said we're going to do this. And he goes, that's a fair question. <laughs> I appreciate your way of saying it. Uh, <laughs> uh, all right. So that was our friends at Points Bet and, and Chris. Uh, before we move on to yeah. the other team that crushed it on day one, we got a, a possible opportunity for the homies out there. Do you have the document open or no? Oh, I do. <laughs> <laughs> you go. You go. We do. I we can't, do. I can't wait to hear you it. Were, I was like, wait. So what team are we talking about? I'm giving person uh, the points bet team. Yeah. That's what we're talking you about. You couldn't wait right? to hear what this opportunity right. was. Kid can't even read what he's supposed to read. <laughs> so it's hard. All right. All right. If you're in an eligible state, yeah. points bet has an exclusive sign up offer for unbuttoned listeners that you can't miss. Download the points bet app. Use code NBC. 2K, NBC, 2K yeah. to sign up and get two risk-free bets up to $2,000. Two free bets up to $2,000. Yeah. Hey, guys, shut your cell phone up in the background, yeah, okay? We're doing vibrate. a show here. Put them on vibrate. Okay, geez. <laughs> All right, and... Get two risk-free bets yeah. up to 2000 I said that already, right? Yeah, you did. So if you bet 100 and lose, you will get free bets worth 100 Wow. What? Okay. So if you get- Up to 2000 Wow. Wait, so if you bet 100 and lose, you will get free bets yeah. worth 100 up to $2,000. That's amazing. Once the game starts, Joe, don't just bet. Live your bet life with points bet. Okay. Damn, I need work on my reads. No, no, it felt no. Like I was going to say. Time. I was going to say. So yeah. you've been bad. You've been bad in yeah. the past, right? right? At the reads, at yeah. the ad reads. Yeah. 
like undrafted free agent. Yeah. I think now though, you know, when it fell apart there, the phone went off, and that yeah. would be distracting. That was to Rob anybody. Hyland, Sunday Night Football yeah. producer, just ruining my show. Threw you no off problem. right there. But you were an undrafted free agent before right. at reading an ad read. Yeah, I think you're closer to being drafted. Do you think I'm, I think you're getting get there? Oh, yeah. thanks, you're thanks. Not, I hey, got invited to the combine this year. You're exactly. Me? Yeah, all right. You're all right. still in the ballpark of undrafted free agent, but you're close to a seventh rounder. Thank you. Okay, great. I think that was a compliment, <laughs> but okay. <laughs> uh, speaking of uh, of teams at the bottom. Uh, trying to work their way up. The Jacksonville Jaguars. This was cool to see. And I don't know if there were any indications that this was going to happen, that the Jaguars were going to be one of the big spenders on day number one, but they certainly were. Made a lot of moves out there. Um, Justin Sanders says, thoughts on the Jags' first day in free agency. Seems like they were making a huge signing every hour for a bit. That's what it did seem like. Well, like, I think we always have this team, right, in free agency every year. And in some years where you just go, it doesn't even make sense. They're just throwing money at a big star player to give themselves good pub and the perception will be good. Like, okay. look, this team's yeah. being aggressive. What I like for this is, like, I, I think it's system fit. It's players that make sense for their schemes on both sides of the ball. You know, they, they make sense for Doug Peterson, and I'll explain in a second. And they make sense for a uh, new defensive coordinator there in, in um, Jacksonville from the linebackers coach in, in Tampa. Pete, what's his name? Mike Caldwell. Is it Caldwell Smith? Damn it. I bank Caldwell, right. Yes, Mike Caldwell. It got guys that fit that, let alone. You know, again, they're a team that's trying to wipe the dirty taste of the Urban Meyer era out of their mouth and kind of change the culture there. And then add it on top of that, wait, we have the number one pick in the draft from last year and we did nothing to help them last year. So let's help them this year. So, you know, free agent tag, Cam Robinson. I like it. I'm all for it. Brandon Scherf, best free agent guard in the market. No doubt about it. Get that done. You know, and then, you know, the two receivers they add. Christian Kirk is got elite explosiveness. He's a special player that way. He can get on the outside, beat you deep. He's a slot receiver, can run good routes. Zay Jones, great possession, intermediate receiver. Makes sense there. Evan Ingram, this is the offensive side of the ball we're hitting on right now, is a star. Evan Ingram has, a, in my opinion, has star ability. Now, he dropped some passes in some big situations up here. He was drafted in the first round a little bit out of nowhere to a degree to where you know the expectations just didn't meet up. It's still been good. In New York. And I know, I know he was really valued by a lot of teams. So he signs a one-year deal. That makes a lot of sense. You know, so I look at that, you know, and just what they did on the offensive side of the ball and go, wow, you pair that with Marvin Jones and LaVisca Chenault. And, you know, the fact that um, uh, they're going to have Travis Etienne back next year with mm. with James Robinson. Yeah. You start to go, okay, wait, this this fits Trevor Lawrence. It fits Doug Peterson's offense. I like it, and that's to me is what I loved about it. Let alone we haven't talked about the defensive guys yet either. The only question with yeah. like a guy like Christian Kirk, it's a four year deal worth up to I think it's up there eighty four million dollars. Right. So he's one of the highest paid wide receivers. Yeah. You would never look at Christian Kirk as being like one of the top wide receivers in football, but he was available at, at a right time with a team that had a need at wide receiver. And uh, the second part of Justin's question was, did they have to overpay to get people to Jacksonville? And so what do you think of the, the cost on some of these? Which uh, the cost doesn't always matter. If you have the cap space and if they're one kind of two-year cap hits, it doesn't always matter. But what do you think? Did they have to overpay and will it hurt them? Well, I, I think that like he's another guy that is kind of like – a little more valued in the NFL community than maybe the public realizes, right? You know, one, you know, in Arizona with some other big names around him that take away from him. And, but two, like when I would go, well, you know, Arizona made the playoffs. You know who the leading receiver was last year? Oh, it was Christian Kirk. I think people would go, oh, really? I didn't even realize that. You know, so there's, he's shown that he can be the guy, let alone, I think there's more potential there to be untapped. And hey, hey, let's not forget, like he was stuck behind DeAndre Hopkins too, as being the main guy a little bit. So they were going to feed a lot of the offense and the plays and the ball through him that hurt Christian Kirk's stats. So I think you're getting a guy where he's being paid for what he's done. There's still a little bit untapped potential. And I think he's the guy that 
a lot of people in football are looking for Ahmed. He's the guy. He's a guy that can do the things we talked about a receiver, but can run reverses. You can run with toss sweep. Oh, that's true. He's one of those guys a little bit where it's like a weapon. And yeah. I think that you know there's there's more of a um, calling for those guys than we've seen in years past at that that position. We're gonna get to what maybe the Jaguars will do with that number one pick now. But we've got breaking news. Oh baby, we gotta do the thing. Well, give me. Oh sorry. Wait, let me guess though. Can I guess? Well, it's not a signing. It's a releasing. Releasing. You're talking about the Miles Jack being released from the Jacksonville Jaguars? No. No. We do have that coming up, though. All right. Well, I spoiled it. I think you just ruined that moment in the podcast. <laughs> uh, the Browns, <coughs> whoa, have released center J.C. Treader. Oh, they released him. Was that not? A, was that expected well, or no? You know, yeah. yeah. Union. Pete's going union president. Union president is probably not helping him. All right. I'm just going to tell you that, that's what happens a lot of the times. Because the team goes, well, we can't get away with anything. This guy, he tells himself, oh, they're breaking a rule, and he, well, we can't do anything. Is that teams true? Don't, really? Teams don't like that. Oh. Teams don't like representatives that are too representative D of and, the players. And he's into it. I mean, J.C. Treader is, I mean, he's the president. Credit. He, players need I someone know. like him, I know. so he's doing his job well. Yes, he is. Yes. So, But uh, I think between that, probably... You know, but he was one price of the top, tag. He was one of the top centers. Yeah, in the he's still going to be. I mean, he's not maybe top five center in football anymore, but he's not far out of it. You know, there's some guys that have passed him up maybe ever since he left Green Bay and got to Cleveland, but still really good. But I'm, they're probably looking at it and they got to resign some guys. You know, they're looking to probably sign another pass rusher. You know, Deshaun Watson might be available. That's true. They might be looking to sign another receiver. You know, there's some things they're trying to finagle there, and that's probably one area they look like, like hey, we are got a really great offensive line. How much money can we spend on it? Yeah. And that, that was probably one area they looked at. Like, Let's trim the fat a little. And maybe they feel like they got some advantages there in coaching it and, and bringing some guys up and teaching that position because they've done a really good job with that for a while now. Yeah, no uh, To finish off the Jaguars here. Yeah. Uh, he, we're going to go back to points bet right here and kind of talk about what they might do with that number one overall pick because I think there was some talk. That oh, that's a good talk. Perhaps point. Yeah, an yeah. offensive tackle would right. be that number one pick. Now that's changed now. Sheriff, you think it has changed? I, I do think it's changed. I think it's a, oh, really like I was, you know, when they first signed Cam Robinson, I went, oh, it still might not matter. They might still just go, we're going to make our offensive line to power. But what I yeah. forgot within that is they drafted Walker Little from Stanford at tackle last oh, year in the second right. round, too. Yeah who's really at first-round talent and started at left tackle at the end of the year. So they're going to play those two at tackle, I would imagine. And now that is going to put, yes, you're going to have your Scherf at guard and they'll figure out the other two and go from there. But I do think this shifts it to pass rusher. And again, I don't have the draft down yet or trade down well, type of material now. I don't think it's a slam dunk, and I certainly don't think tackle is going off the board at one so right now. So according to points bet now, yeah. the two offensive tackles, you got Evan Neal and Iquanu. Yep. Uh, I come Iquanu. Yep. Uh, I yep. Iquanu. Iquanu. Yep. Great kid. From North Carolina Something State. Like that. Yeah. He's like, oh, stop, no, no, stop he's, trying. Yeah. He's like, yeah. one of those was right. Just keep <laughs> just move on. Yeah. Yes. What is his nickname? Icky. Icky. Yeah. Icky, right, Icky like Shuffle. That, right. Uh, plus they're both at plus 800, which would be the second choice behind the odds on favor right now at minus 500, Aiden Hutchinson from Michigan. Yeah, I could. I mean, I could see that. You know, I, I, I certainly could. And again, we just talked about Mike Caldwell coming from Tampa Bay. Yeah. Right. Defensive quarter. What, what has Tampa Bay got? Two good pass rushers. Uh, they that's they're they're yeah. going to believe it. They're going to change their philosophy a little bit. And I want to give like you got Fatu Kasi from the Jets defensive tackle. I mean, yeah, phenomenal football player. One of the more disruptive defensive tackles in football. He's coming down there. And then Foya Sada Luakon. Under talked. He was on my under talked about team. Remember no that? doubt. No doubt. I mean, he's a killer. He really is. He's a thumper who's got more athleticism than your normal thumper. I mean, those are two, again, the, the, that's why I like what they did. It, it was more about let's not just make news and spend money and show our fan base we're doing it. To me, it was sensible. It really did, and it fits kind of, I think, the way they want to coach their team here going forward, and that's what I liked about it. Uh, I was hoping that Aiden Hutchinson might fall to my Detroit Lions at number two. Maybe that won't happen. There is a question from Jordan Cole. Uh, who's a noted Lions fan, a homie as well, who's asking about Miles Jack, who yeah. you ruined just a moment ago. I was going to break that story here. <laughs> Cut by the Jags this morning. He goes, do you think Miles Jack fits in uh, Detroit? So maybe a, a Detroit Lions who made a, a signing not that long ago at wide receiver with DJ Chark. So a minute or two 
on my Detroit Lions. What do you think about Miles yeah, Jack? Yeah, I like that. First off, I'm, I'm yes, I'm a fan of Miles Jack. Yeah. I mean, I really am. I mean, Miles Jack is incredibly athletic, still can really fly. Uh, yes, I think he'd be an improvement to the middle of your deal. He's going to be an improvement to to anybody's defense. I do. I, I, I guess there's a part of me that wonders: is there an injury there that I'm more that, that mm. I'm missing that it's maybe concerning? I don't know. It'll be good for him to get out, get a new fresh start somewhere. But yes, he's got some. He's still got some wear and tear on his tires, all right? All right he's got, he doesn't have too much wear and tear on he's his got, tires. Not, not, not too much. Not too much. The perfect amount of wear and tread tear. He's got some tread left is what we're trying to say. <laughs> and I like your DJ Shark signing. I, I do. I like that too. Because, again, I'm about – I like versatility in the receiver room a little bit. You got, like, Amon Ross St. Brown who can mm-hmm. do a little bit of everything, right? Can play outside, can play the slot. Khalif Raymond, who's more of your slot jitterbug type of guy, right? Yep. You know, so there's, you know, there, they say you got one guy who can do everything, another guy that's kind of a slot guy. And now, okay, who's our big receiver? Who's our guy that's going to scare people on the outside that can, like, if it's one on one, we could throw a back shoulder or a jump ball or he can just run by people. Oh, how about the guy that's 6'3 and runs 4'3? Yeah. Uh, to me, like, he was a guy from the start of free agency that I had a star next to, like Evan Ingram, to go, he's going to get signed for less money than he's worth. And that's what he is. He's just like Evan Ingram. He goes, well, one year, $10 million, uh, hopefully going to tear it up and then sign a big contract the next year. But I like that. And I think you then add Josh Reynolds to that mix, too, right. who they re-sign. Josh Reynolds is like kind of a mix of all of them. Can do it all. Like He can play slot. He's got a little size. He's a pretty good rounder. So he can play all the positions we just talked about. Yeah, I thought that was a, a good move by them. No, oh, I, I liked it, too. And, and Shark is you, you compared him to Evan Ingram, but Evan Ingram had some on-field, you know, like you mentioned, drops. You're right. Shark hasn't games, had that. You know, no. He just was hurt. He yeah. was out. Right. And, and couldn't come back. Tried to, but couldn't come back. So, yeah, I like that move. Detroit Lions, who knows? Maybe they'll be the, the fifth pick in the draft this year. They won't have to be number two uh, once again. <laughs> Let's get into the Deshaun Watson part of the podcast dun, dun, dun. here. Uh, who knows? Maybe some more news will come out after we tape this podcast. Um, and actually, there is some oh more breaking news. This is big. Concerning Deshaun Watson. You know this one? Well, I'm seeing it, Pete typing it right now. <laughs> this is the problem when you start looking at the rundown. You I know. Take all see? My secrets. You liked it better when I was clueless, huh? Okay, let's hear it. <laughs> Adam Schefter reports the Falcons have also emerged as a Deshaun contender. So are they are they interested? Or Pete goes, are they just driving up the price for the Saints and Panthers? Mm, interesting. Oh, it is interesting. You know, it is. First off, Deshaun's gonna have to sign off on one of these teams. So mm-hmm. it's just not like just because you're involved, this means he's like, oh yeah, yeah, oh if they make the right trade, he's going there. No, he's got no trade clause. Interesting thought. I don't think so, though. Seems weird. Right? I, I wouldn't think they're doing this just to drive this up. I think they would be doing this to go, wait, you know, we have Matt Ryan. He's good, but he's getting towards the end here. He, you know, we might have to re-up and pay him again here in the next year or two or something of that nature. You know, he's already got an extremely high number as far as salary cap is concerned. Uh, I could see them making this move, looking to their future, yeah. going, wait, let's see what's available here. You know, Definitely. You know, the big thing would be was would he like them? You know, we talk about the Saints and the Panthers. You know, there's there's questions about all those teams. You know, Saints, you know, it's a new coaching staff. You know, offensive line a little older. Is Michael Thomas going to be there? If they don't have Michael Thomas, it's not that great of a receiving core. All right. The Panthers, I look at and go, there's some talent there. I like their talent, but it's a huge year. Will Matt Rule even be there after this year? Then you don't know what the hell happens. You know, the Falcons, we know, are kind of in the process of still flipping their team over. You know, so, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be interested to see where this goes. To me, here's the two teams that I think make a lot of sense, and I don't know. I mean, the Browns, if I'm Deshaun Watson, it makes a lot. Of, and then the Eagles. The Eagles are another Ooh. team that I have been told are laying in the weeds a little bit with this Watson, and they're just kind of okay. quietly observing. But if things check out, they're going to get involved in this. I think you're going to start getting more eagle scoops because I watched your interview with Sirianni at the Combine. Well, that was the first time you guys met, right? That was, the yeah, yeah. You look like best friends. <laughs> it was like you guys, like I, I would not be surprised He's a good if, dude. if you went out and partied afterwards. I, which, I wish I would have, actually. Yeah. Which you didn't do that? No, what? but we planted some flowers I, and I, they I grew. saw that. And yeah. he, took that yeah. he took that in stride. He was great. He didn't care. And it was interesting. I was listening to Jason Kelsey, who's coming back with the Eagles. Maybe we can talk about them here in yeah. just a second. But... Um, 
He said one of the main reasons he came back was he really liked a lot what was going on there, and that has to be a big part of what Tony or uh, what's his first name? Uh, Sirianni. <laughs> Nick, Sirianni. Nick Sirianni. Tony Saragusa. Is that what you have to say there? <laughs> yeah, Tony Saragusa. One of those uh, Italian names with a T to start yeah. it. Yeah. Seems like it should be Tony, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, he's Tony, Tony Sirianni. He's, uh, Tony from down in South Jersey. He's in Philly. Hey. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah. So that's all I ever heard. Yeah. You know, and I don't know. You know, again, sometimes I can't remember if you were on the pod with me. Paul was on the pod with me. Who knows? I mean, I don't know. But if you remember from like a little bit last year, even when we made fun of some of his awkward press conferences, I had too many people that told me like, man, the people really like the way he does things down there. So don't just judge the press conference. Right. The players like him. People within the organization were impressed with how things were run, the daily approach, all of that. So, and yes, first time meeting him. I mean, he, he, check the box on what I had heard about him. Like just a normal guy. It's not coach speak. It's thoughtful answers. He tries to expand them a little bit. Doesn't just give you the one line to say I answered it, even though it was the shittiest, boring answer ever. You know, I, I appreciate that. There was a little personality to him. Yeah, and I really enjoyed him talking about his brother and how his yeah, brother right? was a coach and he was the innovative right. one. And so in his mind, he's like, well, if it's not working, my brother's going to yell at me for not switching it up. And so I, I think he could enter into the, you know, we put a select few into the offensive genius category. I don't know. I think he might be on his way to... I don't doubt that that. category. I've always, and I've said this from the second, I've always liked the offenses he's been involved in. Always. Along with the guy he has as the offensive coordinator in Shane Steichen. To me, it's just those, I like their offense. I see what they do in the pass game. There's creative things on a weekly basis. It's, you know, again, Frank Reich was the same way. That's, I like Frank Reich's offense in the drop back pass game and play action stuff too. It's aggressive. You can't ever go, oh, wait, this is what it is. It changes on a weekly basis. And it has, a, you know, a lot of game plan specific creativity that I always like. So what could they do with Deshaun Watson? But we do have a question from Graham. Bailey, who says, if you were Deshaun Watson, why wouldn't you pick the Browns over the Saints and Panthers? Mm-hmm. I agree. I'm with them. I would. To me, it's a safer pick. The Browns. There's only one thing we got to figure out with the Browns. I mean, and really, it's it's dwindled down. They got Amari Cooper, or you just go, right. yeah, they gotta they gotta figure out. You know, maybe one more weapon at receiver. But I mean, we've discussed this a lot. The Browns were disappointing as a team last year, and we know that. But damn, I mean, there's so much to like. There really is. It's one of the best offensive lines of football, even without J.C. Treader. You got awesome running backs. You got two good tight ends. You know, yeah, you got Amari Cooper with Donovan Peoples-Jones and Schwartz. It's not the worst. I would bet they add to the wide receiver room. Defense, damn, secondary's good. Linebackers are a little work in progress, but you got JOK there, right? Who's the freaking man? You know, they'll figure out what else they want to do. They just traded Mac Wilson. D yep. line's good. Now Chase Vinovich is coming to the party, right? Yep. Which I think officially cancels out Jadevian Clowney from coming back to Cleveland. I would I would imagine. Interesting. You know, so uh yeah, I mean that that I think I'm with our our, our guy there and, and going If you're Deshaun. If I'm Deshaun, Cleveland has a pure advantage no doubt over the Panthers and Saints in my eyes for sure I'm curious if they don't get a quarterback how Baker responds I think I think he'll respond well I don't know there's just something about him yeah he struggled obviously but I I almost chalk up last year as like an injury year it's a tough it's a tough thing you know it's 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 first off you don't turn down the chance to maybe get Deshaun Watson unless you got a Deshaun Watson type player in your room or in your team and Baker's not that I like Baker you know that but it's it's Deshaun Watson when he's hitting on all cylinders top five is unquestionably top five quarterback in football no doubt about it so yeah that's that's tough to turn down as a football team let alone you know we don't know where contract negotiations stand with Baker Mayfield maybe they don't like the talks of that conversation there you know and maybe they're Maybe they're, you know, not only legitimately interested, maybe they look at it as like maybe this will be a little bit of like you're like you're kind of hoping, a motivation, yeah. you know, get him to really be the guy we want and lock him in here to really be the quarterback of the future. Maybe he needs a little fire under his ass with the Deshaun Watson rumors. To wrap up the breaking news that the Falcons have entered the fray for Deshaun Watson, uh, the Falcons would take a $55 million cap hit if they traded Matt Ryan. Ooh. So that would make it. That's that would make difficult. it tough. That would be quite the sacrifice it's, for the future, for sure. Into your cap right there, just a little bit. Jeez. Um, with Carolina here, this is Patrick Mahomes, not to be confused <laughs> with Patrick. What up, Patrick? Did you get married this weekend in Hawaii too? 
with a couple microphones on. Did you see the picture of him? Oh, he had microphones on? Yeah, he, I think they were, must be taping it for some sort of documentary that will oh, be released sure. in 20 right. years. Right. Uh, what's the chance of Watson to Carolina, and would you move on from McCaffrey due to the injuries and salary? Big fan since your Texas days. All right, so he's a Longhorn Sims fan. Don't know if he has the jersey or not. But uh, that, the part of that that's interesting is like what these teams will have to do to make this work. And yes. there were talks of McCaffrey being part of a deal. Right. And, you know, maybe that's the, the talk here is, you know, Carolina, are, are they really willing to move on from McCaffrey? And if they did that, what could they what could they do and what could they add? And yeah. Some interesting questions with no, that. No, interesting question. I think Carolina to me is like a little under the radar interesting. And I know I know we had the Matt Rule question, but you know, we've talked a lot of it during this I mean the two receivers they have are special. Mm-hmm. Let alone, you know, the kid they drafted at L S U in the second round last year. So they got you got you look at that and go, Okay, I like that. You know, yes, McCaffrey at running back. I mean, would I trade him? Yes, if I got the right, you know, value for him that made sense. You know, again, you've invested a lot of money over the last two years, and you got, what, 10 games? You know, that that's hard to swallow unless you get the right return for it. But if it has to be part of the deal for trading to Sean Watson, I think you do that. De- Carolina is – to me, going to be the most aggressive player for this. They've they've never hit uh, like this. They've never have tried to hide this. They want it so bad. Tepper wants it bad. I mean, that's they they made aggressive moves to Bridgewater and Sam Darnold, even though they weren't like totally sold those were the guy. They wanted to make a quarterback work so badly, they were willing to give more for those guys than they even wanted. So I would think, and to me, I, it is one that I would like. I would think about if I'm them, man. If I'm Deshaun Watson, it certainly would. You know, I'm not saying they're Cleveland, but their defense has a lot of young talent on it. You know, the offensive line needs a piece or two. There's no doubt. Got Austin Corbett. Got from Austin the Rams. Corbett. Yes, exactly right. So that helps out a little bit of guard. And then, you know, like we said, the weapons are, are kind of good there, too. The tight end's good. Tommy Tremble, Ian Thomas. So I don't know, it's not the worst place. I wouldn't be shocked if he ended up in Carolina. The question is, does he love DJ Moore as much as Chris Sims loves Probably DJ not. Moore. But it, maybe if he turns on film <laughs> and really studies it, he'll go, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. Because DJ Moore out of the teams he's interested, is the best receiver out of all the teams he's interested. He's better than anybody in Cleveland. He's better than anybody uh, on the Saints. Yep, I'd take him over Michael Thomas, just so everybody's clear on that. He's better than anybody on the Eagles. And I know Devin Smith is special and all that. But yeah, DJ Moore, to me, with a good quarterback, is Jamar Chase. If he was on the Bengals, we'd go... Whoa, this guy does Jamar Chase type things. He catches slants and runs for 70. You know, uh, uh, what's his name for the Dallas Cowboys? Michael Parsons told me it was the most impressive player he played all year. It was DJ Moore. I said, who's the one guy? He goes, you know who's somebody? He goes, DJ Moore. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I go, yeah, I remember you guys chasing him around in the middle of the field like your chicken with a head cut off. So, yeah. yeah. Kind of that new age receiver, too. Yeah, it's the guy, guy we talk about. All, right. The reverse and all that. Yeah. Thick legs, thick ass. All right, right. So if Watson's listening to that, maybe he's leaning a little bit more uh, towards uh, going to Carolina. Let's go on to the Jets right now because I think they're another team that. J-E-T-S. Trying to make some moves. Right. Trying uh, to help the rookie quarterback. D Stern, 719. What's what your D? take? What's your take on the Jets' moves so far? Um, Do you like Lakin Tomlinson and CJ? Uzama. I love both of them. Love them. I mean, Lake and Tom, first off, Lake and Tomlinson comes from the same system they're going to run, right? Come from 49ers. They, they know what he is. You know, M- Michael Fleur knows exactly what he is. Sala knows what he is. You know, he's he's got tremendous strength and power. And for a guy as big and thick as he is, he's a very good athlete to run the Shanahan zone schemes and all of that. So, yeah, it's a great pairing. You will pair him with Elijah Vera Tucker. They put Mackay Becton at right tackle. Hopefully he can stay healthy. Yeah. George Fant, who who played well at left tackle last year. And you go, crap, they got something there. They got a little O-line. Now what's the next thing that offense needs, right? They need their George Kittle. And not to say, you know, uh, C.J. Uzuma. Uzuma I, I, I've been butchering his name all day. I, 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 think, there, I think there are seven uh, pronunciations that are okay. I think I've said seven today. <laughs> I've said seven. I said five on the show today. Uzama. Uzama. I, I practiced it before the show today. It doesn't matter. Whatever. What, when you practice it before the show, like, what does that mean? Where Where are you and what are you doing? Well, like, like, are you just I'm literally, there? like, yeah, in my seat or, like, in the car trying to say it out loud <laughs> properly. Uzama. Uzama. 
<laughs> they need their yeah. their George Kittle though. Was my point. Yeah, you know that that's part of like it's why the Dolphins franchise Gasecki in Miami. It's it's part of their checks and balances to keep people off their run game. Oh wait, we're running the zone to the right, zone to the right, zone to the right. Oh, you're overloading your defense for our zone to the right. Oh, here comes the tight end to the back door. Here comes the play action tight end through the back door. Whatever it may be, it's a huge part of their offensive system. So that's where I like it. I really do. And then Braxton Berrios. You know, he made Jamison Crowder expendable because, you know, he's going to be the slot jitter bug. So you pair Corey Davis, Berrios, and and our guy from uh, Elijah Moore from Ole Miss. Shit. The Jets, I like their moves and what they're doing. I really do. Even re-signing LaMarcus Joyner to one year. LaMarcus Joyner fits that defensive scheme. He can be their Jimmy Ward, like for the 49ers. He can be that guy. So, yeah, I did like their moves. I think it helps their team, helps Zach Wilson. Helps Zach Wilson. The Bengals are trying to help yep. keep uh, their quarterback upright, mm -hmm. keep Joe Burrow upright. And by the way, Pete put in our document here, it is pronounced from the man himself, Uzama. Uzama. Which is different than what Pete just told me in my ear. Yeah. And it, Pete, <laughs> Pete says that's what he said. And you have no evidence that it wasn't. No, he didn't, yeah, he no didn't say you. He said Uzama. Your word against his right now. <laughs> uh, let's go to the Bengals. And then, then I want to go to the Dolphins because I think the Dolphins are interesting. Yeah, we too. do. Um, Bengals uh, trying to upgrade that offensive line. Alex Kappa. Uh, he was with Brady and the Bucks last year. Got to do year, it. Yep. $40 million deal. Yeah. They also got Ted. Is it Karras? Karras, yeah. So formerly of the Patriots. So yep. a couple on the offensive line, tagging Jesse Bates to keep him around. Um, so, yeah, what do you think? Have they done enough so far? You lose their, uh, one of your weapons for Joe Burrow in C.J. Uzama. <laughs> um, but they, keeping him upright was priority number one. Priority number one. You know, hey, listen, they got weapons, right? So they, they, you can't keep them all. It's just it's part of the business in the NFL. You got three damn good receivers, right? They got that. Now, first off, you know, uh, Kappa, great. I mean, killer, road grader. Tough as hell. I mean, you've seen Brady back there in just about every game. He's got great protection. They can overpower people in the run game. You know, so he's he's great. I mean, and they didn't have to, you know, give top level Brandon Scherf type money right. to make that happen. So that that's good. Ted Karras, the reason I like this is yes, he could start. Even if he doesn't start, he's a great backup. He's a guy that's like can play all three positions. He's played center and guard when he's been in uh, New England. And, you know, when you get a New England guy, you're getting a guy that's going to be extremely well-schooled in techniques, knowing all different types of protections. So that's great. So now you prepare that. Jonah Williams, a left tackle, right? And now they got to figure out what they're going to do with their second-round pick from last year, um, Carmen, Carmen Jackson, right? I, I'm not even – I'm just going off the top – from from Clemson, who – I would think would might be in the running for right tackle. You know, Jackson Carmen. Yes, Jackson Carmen. I yeah. knew it didn't sound right. You were just doing it like in the phone book. Like yeah, the, yeah, right. Like Carmen it was in the for, phone yes, book, that's right. how it would be. But to me, had elite talent coming out who just needed a little help and technique and things like that. So they got him to play around with as well. He started a number of games this year. Yeah, so I look at that and go, I would be shocked if the Bengals' offensive line isn't better next year. Okay. They, I mean, that was the one need. That right? was you, it. Got, you got some right. studs on defense. You got, obviously, some playmakers on offense. Just give them time. We'll see where the plays. draft goes to see if they can add depth. Maybe there's guys there. Again, I don't have feel for that position yet when it comes to the draft, so I can't really tell you the value of it, but I'm cracking away. Miami Dolphins wanted to get more explosive on the offensive side. You got Mike McDaniel there, the new head coach, coming over from Kyle Shanahan and the 49ers. Liam Crooks, six. Why is Chase Edmonds a good fit in the McDaniels run game? So yeah. they, they got Chase Edmonds from Arizona, two-year deal for about $12 million. That was part of it. You got Cedric Wilson there, wide receiver from Dallas, too. So trying to get a couple playmakers. But what about Chase Edmonds specifically, and what do you think he can do in this offense? He's great in the past game, and he can be that one cut lay hey outside zone outside zone outside zone get the ball be patient press the edge look for that one gap when you see that one gap put your foot in the ground and run through that thing a thousand miles per hour that's what he can be and then he's got the type of explosiveness and ability to where you can go oh he just ripped off a 50 yard run all right oh he came out of the backfield and ran a wheel route up the sideline for 40 yards that's great so he's really going to be great on all three downs and you know a guy that has some real explosive ability and can go zero to 60 in a hurry. And that's what they want. Now, those are the kind of runners that the Shanahan scheme looks for. Guys that can fly, guys that go, I have no regard for my body as I run through this hole. 
I have none. I don't care about my body. Coach told me to run through 100 miles per hour. Yes, sir, coach, I'm going to do it. What? My head got knocked off. I'll do it again next play. That's the way they are. So he fits that. And, man, this is another team like Miami where I go, I mean, like Jacksonville, where I just go, these moves made sense to me. You know, first off, good protection by Teddy Bridgewater for your football team. Good backup, but not overriding backup that people are going to be like, well, we want Teddy, right? It's going right. to give Tua a chance, and then if he falls on his face, then okay, we got a guy here to save the day. That's great. Cedric Wilson, you're right. I mean, Cedric Wilson, I mean, yes, under the radar, you know, big-time talent. We know Dallas wanted to keep him. That was their plan with trading Amari Cooper was they wanted to get Michael Gallup and Cedric Wilson under contract. contract. Wilson, great size. What is he, 6'4", 6'5"? I don't know. I didn't if know he you was see, that big. Uh, if you see him in person, I, I didn't know he was that big either until I saw him on the field last year. Yeah, look it up and let me know. Um, in, in, in Tampa on the opener, I went, oh, shit, Cedric Wilson's a different animal, different beast than I thought in person. So I did not realize that. You know, you add that with some, he's like, 188 game. centimeters, which is 6'2". Yeah. It's 6'2". Okay, yeah. so he's not quite as big as I thought. Um, but either way, I think route runner can do it all. That's perfect there. Gasecki, we just talked about that scheme. They need that. George Kittle. Uh, I like all of that. And then re-signed one of the best players on their defense that really the world doesn't know that in Emmanuel Agba. He was almost on my under-talked about he's, list. He's, he deserves to be. I You're right. gave it to Cedric uh, well, Wilson. Wilson. Yeah, I gave been it to him. I didn't yeah. want to give it to Duke Dolphins, but he was in the in consideration because it was a name that you didn't hear about. No. But he just got a four-year, $65 million be- deal. Because he's a beast and there's real value. And again, there's this a guy there. The stats don't tell the story about that guy. You know, how much he up a play how versatile he is and what he does on the defensive line and he's a good pass rusher you know he's not a superstar pass rusher but he's a damn good pass rusher who has three four four three defensive end capabilities and that's where it's rare and again and down there in Miami they're still running the my uh the New England defense so they need guys like that they need a guy that yeah he can two gap and one gap that's what they're looking for and that's where Agba's special and he's never going to be a 15 sack a year guy that's not yeah. what he is and like you mentioned, it, it doesn't all ride on Tua being outstanding. No. You know, even if he, he falls flat, you, you get the replacement. And- they re-signed Preston Williams, I thought I saw earlier today. Okay. I could be wrong. Pete, you could check that out. But that's another, I mean, another big size receiver you have. Tua is, so they did, I'm, I'm correct. Tua is a, his best thing he does is throw fades, jump balls, back shoulders. Those. So you get a Preston Williams, Cedric Wilson. Those are guys that can kind of do that. And then that's where it fits. And now, okay, wait, we got size on the outside, and we got this little f- Jalen Waddle in the middle who's quick as hell and got three rockets up his ass. That's going to make things interesting to, to defend them. Breaking news. <laughs> per Vic Lombardi, Uh-oh. who is out in Denver. Whoa. The Denver Broncos Whoa. are going to be signing Whoa. Randy Gregory. Whoa, are you kidding me? Wow, that's a big move right there. He's the only one reporting it right now. Yeah, because Randy Gregory was it was a lot of people thought he was going to resign with the Cowboys this morning. Perhaps I'm going too early with just one source here. I should have waited for another source. Oh, wow, that, that's a big. So, an wow. hour ago he was resigning with the with the um, Cowboys. Now he's going to the Broncos. So it sounds like they swooped in and gave him an offer. That was that he could not refuse. He could not refuse, and I bet you he wanted to give the Dallas Cowboys the hometown benefit of the doubt. They've been very good to him. They have, but you know, again, this goes into the, you know, we talked about a little with with um, Denver a little. Uh, no, we didn't talk about Denver yet today. That was on the show this morning. Yeah, don't e- know if that was with me or well, with Paul yeah, or yeah, with yeah, Mike one or- of my seven f- hosts I work with. <laughs> but EJ Evero, their new defensive coordinator in Denver, okay. he's. From the Brandon Staley, that group of coaches, he's going to want. So what does Randy Gregory do? Yeah, when we're in nickel, he plays the events end. You can stand him up and play him outside linebacker. He's that kind of athlete, too. So there he is. He's going to be the Leonard Floyd of Denver, right, if that makes sense. So and then they got Bradley Chubb on the other side, and hopefully he can, you know, be healthy and all to go. And that, oh, that that could be big time. I thought I saw other news, but I was wrong. Mike Garofalo says it is a five-year, seventy million dollar deal with the Denver Broncos. Now earlier, wow. Demarcus Lawrence, or I think it was yesterday, resigned yeah. with the Cowboys on on a pretty team-friendly deal, three-year, right. forty million, that a lot of people thought would give them enough room to sign. 
Gregory, too. But I bet you they weren't expecting five years, seventy million from somebody. So I, that one seems to me like, like Denver let things get down the road and told the agent, "Hey, when you think you're getting close to making a deal, tell us and let us have one chance to, you know, take a swing and see if we can impress you." And it sounds like they impressed him. Where he said, "Okay, Jerry, I like you, but I gotta go somewhere else." Dang! Here in the last five minutes, there's some stuff about, popping right we've now. We've talked right? about the Cowboys. Missing out on Cedric Wilson now, losing out on Randy Gregory. Right, might be might, they may be an early loser. But, I mean, it's, that's in free agency. Not good. Hey, I'm I'm sitting here looking at news right now. I'm sorry, uh, James Daniels to the Steelers. They need some guard help. That's a good signing by them right there. I like that. Sorry, I just wanted to do that. And, 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 and Andrew Whitworth retiring. And so, Andrew Whitworth retired, right. right, which was expected. But so. as Pete says, let's stay with the Steelers. Perfect segue. Yeah. Uh, because they have a quarterback they need to protect with huh. some offensive linemen. And it is Mitch Trubisky who signed, what is it, a two-year deal? Two-year deal. Financials 14 for million, seven million a year. Is that a lot? No. No, it's, 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 it's backup, high-end backup bridge quarterback type money. Tom Brady is booty. Who often comments in here and makes he us say that? Although you're on board with that as a noted Tom Brady hater yeah, throughout you. your years, uh, can Good. Mitch really revitalize his career in Pittsburgh? Does he fit with the pieces they have? So that's the that's the number one question. Can Mitch be good? Yes, I do think Mitch can be good. Mitch was better in Chicago than people give him credit for, as we talked about then for many a years. It was the worst offense in football he was involved in in Chicago. Sorry, everybody out there. And they still went to the playoffs for two years. Did a lot of good things. Hey, the playoff game against the Philadelphia Eagles that they lost, the double doink, mm -hmm. he played good in that game. Go back and watch it. And what a clutch drive that was to go win the game before the stupid kicker missed the kick. I mean, an easy, makeable kick as far as NFL standards are concerned. So, you know, again, is he perfect? No. But Buffalo was the perfect place to rehabilitate him. He was awesome in preseason last year. And Buffalo people raved about him all year. And then... I think when you match up also, too, that, man, all the players on Buffalo liked him and all the players on Chicago liked him, it seems like everybody likes Mitchell Trubisky except Matt Nagy. All right, so maybe it was Nagy and his issue. It wasn't everybody else. So, yes, that. And I think Pittsburgh wants to run an offense that's a little bit more movement of the quarterback. That's what Matt Canada wants to do. So Trubisky, I mean, he's got low 4.6, high 4.5-ish type speed. He's an impressive athlete. He has a strong arm. Can he work on accuracy a little bit? Yes. But we saw last year with a good offensive coach and Brian Dayball, accuracy improved in the preseason. He was much more of a machine throwing the football. So, yes, he's the kind of guy that I think you give this deal for, and – it gives you wiggle room for a lot of things. Hey, wiggle room to hey, maybe he can prove to us he's a starter and he is the guy for the future. Wiggle room to if we do draft a quarterback and let's say we take a Malik Willis from Liberty at pick 20 or 21, wherever Pittsburgh is. Right. Now we don't have to throw him in there right away. Trubisky can be the quarterback for a year, maybe two if we got to. Right. Okay. We, we don't draft the quarterback. We got Mitchell Trubisky, but they just tendered Dwayne Haskins to two and a half million dollars. If Dwayne Haskins has a big, awesome training camp and outperforms him. Okay. Fine. Shit. We start Dwayne Haskins. We got a good backup in Trubisky in case shit falls apart. And I think they've given themselves like a lot of areas to where they're not desperate anymore. And they're going to be able to keep all avenues open as they go forward. So I think, and then the answer of a question about the offense they want to do more of the movement, the quarterback run stuff. Najee Harris, that running game, you yeah. know, he's good at pa you know, in the pass game. We saw last year Claypool and Deontay Johnson speed sweeps and reverse became a big part of their offense. I think that's what they kind of want to do there, and that's where Trubisky, I think, fits what they want to do. And, uh, I, you know, I think it's a good move for them. No matter what they did, it was probably going to be an upgrade. Ben wasn't great no. last year. It's better than Mason Rudolph. Better than Mason Rudolph, right, who's on the right. roster right now. Yeah. So, and I think Dwayne Haskins, who will still be on the roster. He, right they, they gave him what they did. That's what he I was is. saying. They tendered him. Okay. So he's going to get over $2.5 million this year. So he's, I mean, that's where it kind of covered all bases. Like, right. you got a starter, but he's not like, oh, definitely the starter if somebody outperforms him because we paid him such stupid money. Right. Right. Gives you a little, hey, oh, wait. You know, again, what people don't realize, too, is you know, the draft is still in a very early process for a lot of the big decision makers. Yeah, some of the 
pro personnel, the GMs might know what they got, but they got to now have the coaches and the people that are going to coach these guys also go, oh, wait, he is what you thought he was, and it all match up. So you're a long way off of that, let alone we know this is not like the most stellar quarterback draft class we've ever seen in the history of football either to where you know you might be a little tentative this year in a year to go oh i don't know if i want to draft any of these guys i'm not sure how great they're going to be we're talking about that on monday we're going to talk we're going to rank gonna it up top five or yep. six maybe i'm just about done with the quarterbacks i got one Ooh. or two guys left to watch and i'm done ready i kind of sh- know my rankings are already. You ready to shock the world again shock the world right. zach wilson will be the number one quarterback even though he's not in the draft <laughs> yeah <laughs> number one in our hearts again how about a couple teams that need a quarterback yeah still and yeah the moves are yet to come what is this one uh a grieved book 33 says jimmy Ursay said all the chips are in this year so do you think jimmy g or gardner Minshew is all chips in because i don't i'm sick of this quarterback circus we got going on since luck retired they should have never gotten rid of carson wentz so uh, maybe a rare colts fan that was actually happy about what wentz did last year thinks maybe he's still the best option so yeah what are the colts doing here what, what, what's, I mean, where do they go at quarterback? I don't know. You know this is going to be an interesting one here. Um, I know what he means. I, I know what our aggrieved book 33 means is where it's like a little bit where I, you know, I, I stick with a guy. I said this on indie radio there where it's just like, you know, I mean, yeah, I understand you want to get rid of Carson Wentz, but what's as long as you got a better option or an option that's equal. And that's where I just go, ah, so what is out there right now that's equal or better? Marcus Mariota has been mentioned Mariota as a possible Mariota has target. been mentioned, certainly. Am I going to say he's better than Carson Wentz? No, I'm not. You know, Jimmy Garoppolo is out there. Everybody thinks Jimmy Garoppolo is going there. I just go, man, we're going to – we got rid of a quarterback that throws a lot of dumb interceptions for another quarterback who's maybe throws more dumb interceptions? Uh, that's where I don't look at it. That, that, that's uh, Carson Wentz has m- way more talent than Jimmy Garoppolo. We've seen Carson Wentz carry teams. Never seen Jimmy Garoppolo do that. So, yeah, the options are are a little scary that way. And you know, you mentioned those two. I I think they're going to have to kind of evaluate this. Uh, Jameis Winston, he's out there, and I know that might not be. Oh wow, I love that. But I like Jameis. There's still Jameis Winston starting you know, caliber traits there, all right? Ryan Fitzpatrick, are you going to do that? I don't think so. Or do you wait to see how a few more dominoes fall here? Does does Deshaun Watson go to Cleveland, you know? And does Baker Mayfield necessarily definitely go to Houston if that trade's made? I don't know. Does he become available to the open market? You know, does he end up going to to, uh, Philadelphia? Now Jalen Hurts becomes available? And now you go that option, you know, I don't know, but it's it's a little scary to me out there right now looking at the the current landscape. Like they don't of, have a great doesn't I mean, nothing that just goes wow. Deshaun, unless Deshaun, which, which reports they said are no. out there, they were interested, but Deshaun was like no. the Texans said no. Oh, the Texans. The Texans oh, the said Texans no. Said yeah, because no. they're like, damn, well, yeah, we want to see Deshaun come here and whoop our ass twice a year for the next 10 years. Thanks. Yeah, Got sure. We have that thrown in their face. So they said no to that one. They go, no, thank you. No, thank you. Uh, so you mentioned a couple teams there, and I think we should go to those. Saints next, because you talked about Jameis Winston. Seems like they should just have Jameis Winston. I, I think he's the, in the leader house there. Jack Farr said prospect of Michael Thomas, Alvin Kamara, Jarvis Landry, and Deontay Harris behind that Saints O-line. Surely a free agent quarterback or quarterbacks New Orleans would trade for would be excited. No? So, yeah. Seems like it was. it's a good situation. They're but, still good there, yes. Oh, you said that in a way where you're like, I don't think they're that good. Well, no, it's just that you know, it's it's a team that has salary cap issues. You know, Michael Thomas hasn't played football in a year. You know, I, uh, there was a part of me that just questioned, is he going to definitely be back with the Saints for sure? Uh, Deontay Harris, uh, I, I love his weapon, you know, kind of jack-of-all-trades, you know, scary weapon X guy on the offensive side of the ball. Alvin Kamara is still really good, even though it's year seven, and we're getting there now. They didn't sign Jarvis Landry yet, did they? I mean, I didn't miss that, no, right? No, no, no. They're no, just no. talking about that? Yeah, I, he's I trying know. to will it to – Jack Farr is trying to will it to happen. Yeah, you know, I don't think Jarvis Landry is the guy they need. Michael Thomas does the Jarvis Landry stuff. He can block in the run game. He works the middle of the field. You know, Jarvis Landry is not a guy that's necessarily famous for separation on the outside as a receiver. He's not. He needs to be in the slot and needs a little help from the system. And to me, that's what Michael Thomas does. So – 
You know, I don't see that happening, but it's certainly not the worst place. They still got a good defense. They still got an offensive line. Uh, but uh, you still like Cleveland for Deshaun. You think that's I a better do. spot than I New do. Orleans? I do. Yes. You know, if new head good. coach. You know, I know it's a lot of the same regime down there, but yes, I think Cleveland's team is set up a little better for the future. Yeah, I do. Okay, the musical quarterbacks continue. A quarterback you talked about, Jimmy Garoppolo, who may be headed to Indianapolis. Seems like a lot of people think that. Your boy El Ray is back. He goes, how much do you think Jimmy G would get on the open market if the 49ers were to release him before Wednesday's salary cap deadline? That's an interesting question. It is. I, you know, it's a good one. Uh, mm. What if he was out there? You could just sign him. Don't trade for him. Right, he's gonna get. He's not going to get huge money. He's going to get more like, hey, you're our starter kind of money, but you got to prove it to get more. That would be kind of what I would think. Now, I would think actually really if he got signed by a team, he's probably going to get a deal similar to what he's got with the 49ers. Or it's going to be, you know. 24, 22, 25 million a year. Prove to us you're the guy. 20 million, somewhere in that range. Okay, one right? year, 20 million. Yeah, something like that. Like where it's like, hey, prove it. Or a two year deal that's kind of averages out to that, to, you know, where there's some maybe some incentives to be had and everything there. But uh, I think that's where, you know, I would say the range that would be fair in my eyes there. He's making 27.5 right now. You know, again, I'm looking at the rest of the group here. You know, once you get out of the 20s, Brady's the last guy in the 20s at 25 million a year with Derek Carr right now, mm. right? So I would think it's somewhere along those those lines as far as being paid right around there. All right. So what would you be willing to trade for him, knowing his value? Second round, third round? I like. He's still under contract, right? Yeah. So you got to pay him. You got to pay him that, right? You know they don't want him. So, what, what, they going to keep him at 27.5? Oh, no, you're not? Oh, because their value goes down. All right, because you don't want to keep him. We're doing yeah. you a favor by trading and taking the contract. And it's not like one of those if you're like, oh, wow, we missed out on Jimmy G. Now what are we going to do? Because it seems like, okay. Right. And now. Let's figure it out. We can't. Oh, wait, he can't practice for our football team until July? Yeah, that's hopefully. a problem. That's a problem. Oh, you know, end of July, August, hopefully. Wow. Okay, great. You know, I mean, that's those are all things to me that hurt the value of, of Jimmy G. To where... You know, that's where I even questioned, was the, the delay of the shoulder surgery all a screw you to San Francisco? But I would think you could almost get him for mid-round pick, really. Ooh, maybe third, even less. Third, maybe less. fourth. Yeah, you could. Fourth okay. and change. what do you think? Do you think he gets cut, just released? No. I don't so think they will. So what if they don't have a trade partner? Do they go into the season with him? Well, they can cut him like post-June probably okay. and actually save money that way. Because they have cap issues for yeah, sure. Yeah, they do. And, they, of course, they got to sign Nick Bosa. They want to sign Debo Samuel. I mean, yeah. they, you're right. I mean, McGlinchey's going to be coming due soon here. That's why they couldn't re-sign DJ Jones who went to the Broncos. Uh, you know, who else are we missing? They missed somebody else in free agency. Um, they got Traverius Ward. I like that. Yeah. But, yeah, I, I think it's one of those you hold on. You know, kind of as long as you can here for a little or just a little bit longer just to see if you can't get the Colts or the Panthers or just see what the happens with the Watson domino to see now who becomes desperate for the next guy because Jimmy Garoppolo is going to be that next guy in the conversation. Someone that doesn't need to worry about where he's going to be playing next year, Aaron Rodgers. We didn't know it was going to be Green Bay. We found that out last week, and now he has officially signed his contract. Three years, $150.8 million, I think is what the final numbers were. Adam Blackall is asking us, with the Packers' limited cap space, combined with the fact that they're a couple elite players away from truly competing to win a Super Bowl, does Rodgers' new contract severely limit his chances of getting another ring? Now, I think the way it's structured, this next year's not that bad. Not Naturally, at all. it kind of reduces it to for, $28 million. For what he reduced it, it for like $20 million less for right, this year. So maybe right. this year it helps him. Right. You figure it out as you go in the, in the future, as they seem to always do. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it doesn't seem like Devontae Adams wants to play on the franchise tag again. So uh, I don't know what's going to happen there. But are they limited in what they can add? From what I've what seen as of right now, no. I mean, he helped them out for right now. It's not, that shouldn't affect it. Don't let – what I would say there is just don't let that – that theme affect what oh you think that's affecting the football team no they were already in dire di dire you know a dire spot is that right i guess so it's so whatever way. dire straits dire straits there yeah. we go yes they were already in a bad spot with that rogers helped them out you know where it's gonna hurt them is three and four years down the road it's yeah. the added two extra years on the contract that it's gonna be like 
you know, the Saints this year. Drew Brees wasn't on the on the roster, but it was a huge cap number for him to still be there, right? That's where it's going to hurt them. But I think the next two to three, I don't think it's really killed. From my information I have here, yes, it's the $28 million cap hit this year. Next year's $31 million cap hit. Okay. So that's not huge. The year after that, it goes to 40. Now, again, let's not forget that the, the salary cap's going up as we're doing this. But then it becomes those two years at the end where it becomes $59, $53 million, and that's where it might become an issue for their football team. Could be Definitely. a problem. Yeah. Uh, but what do you think about the Packers? Because they do have money. They've used it. They signed Preston Smith, an extension, four-year, $52 million. Resign Devondre Campbell, five-year, $50 million. Big move there. Cut uh, Zadarius Smith. He had a $27 million cap number, so they're moving some things around. So Zadarius gone, Preston still there, Devondre there still. What do you make of that? I, I like Devondre, of course. He was phenomenal last year for them. Uh, he's, he's by far the best linebacker they have on their football team. Preston Smith was not great last year. He's good. He was not great. He finished stronger than he started. But, you know, again, for, for what they want to do and defense end, I mean, I, I think they like and like what he does and brings to the team. He's still kind of in the prime of his career. To, to me, the question is just like, yeah, are they going to be able to finagle enough money for, you know, Devontae Adams, who's yeah. going to want probably $23 million a year, basically, or more, right? And then what, what's the ripple effects off of that? Oh, no. Can you, can you resign a Marquez Valdez Scantling? I know after that contract's done and all that, because he's free. Alan Lazard's free, you know, and, and they're good players. Valdez Scantling, it'd be one of those guys that I wouldn't be shocked gets paid a little bit more more money than we expect because he can fly. He has a specific role that some teams are going to look at and go, "Damn, we don't have a guy that can threaten anybody deep. We need one guy like that." Oh, Valdez Scantling's a four three ish type guy. Let's do that. Uh, that's where I look at it, just to go. You know, where does it go for their team from here? And, you know, again, too, they're another team. Jair Alexander is going to be out for a new contract here mm, soon. Yeah. I mean, they got some issues for sure. Maybe they will draft entirely wide receivers. They haven't drafted one in what, since 1814 or something like that? So <laughs> maybe this will be the year where they just all, go all the way through and just go, let's just get a receiver. In no, every there's spot a lot here. of speed at receiver. That's for sure in the draft. Breaking news. <laughs> Safety Marcus Williams has agreed to a contract with, I'll give you one guess. Give me, hold on, hold on. Let me pull up the teams. AFC or NFC? AFC. AFC. Oh, baby. Hold on. Let me look at it. Let me Pete, look at it. Pete is guessing the Jets. Pete is guessing the Jets. Hmm. Hmm. Let me see. Is Marcus May still out there? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me just see this here. Was with the New Orleans Saints, if you're unfamiliar. He was with He's a very good player. He's a really good free safety. I mean, ball hawking free safety in the middle of the field. I'm going to say Baltimore Ravens. Oh, my gosh. You got it. They got Baltimore no Baltimore Ravens. Wow. I didn't. I promise you. He didn't cheat. No, didn't. he's just got the teams up right there. They're, he doesn't have news. They, are, they have no safety, so that makes sense. I get, year, I get it. Five-year deal worth $70 million. He's, you know, going into free agency, he was one of the top five players. Correct? Definitely. He got franchised last year by the Saints, a good defensive team. He's a really good football player that doesn't get the credit he deserves. He can fly. He covers a lot of ground. He was my under-talked-about safety. He was. Man, a lot of my under-talked-about guys are getting you. big money deals. Look at you. Whoa. you know, look at you scouting it out. But then tackles well. You know, got some coverage skills as far as man to man. I mean, that's a good job by them for sur for, for sure. I mean, he really is. He's he's uh, definitely one of the best safeties in football. You know, I know there's people that thought like maybe Tyron Matthew might end up in Baltimore. Marcus Williams, as you can see by the price tag, is in a different level right now than a Tyron Matthew. You know, and that's another one too. It's interesting just all together. You know, I think people are surprised like the Chiefs didn't re-sign him. Yeah. You know, Tyron Matthew is not what he used to be. I'm not proud to sit here and say that. But he's no longer one of the five best safeties in football. That that time has come and gone. I'm sorry, you know, and I'm sure the price tag is probably a little more than what teams feel like it really is worth right now. And uh, they signed Justin Reed from the Texans. Justin Reed is a good player. He's better than Tyron Matthew at this point in his career. I'm sorry, and I don't, I don't, because I really like Tyron Matthew. I always have been a big fan. Um, but yeah, it'd be interesting to see where he goes. I like that signing by the Chiefs, by the way, and great signing by the Ravens there. Okay, so uh, breaking news on the pod. Yeah, Justin Reed to the Chiefs. Also looks like Frank Clark is going to 
stick around there. Yeah, good for the them. Chiefs. I mean, hey, they traded a lot for him. They paid him a ton of money, okay? And when he is hitting on all cylinders, he's really freaking good. I mean, he was really good at the end of the year last year. You know, he's got some legal issues and all of that. But, yeah, good for them for, you know, trying to trying to figure that out. He's definitely one of the linchpins of their, their Super Bowl caliber team. Breaking news. <laughs> veteran, veteran quarterback Chase Daniel signing a one-year deal to go to the Chargers. Don't so. make me ever do that again. Sorry. I was <laughs> not a <laughs> jerk. No, you just, you, you, wasted it. You, you, know? you, you, you uh, lost yeah. my trust now. I won't do it <laughs> for you anymore. Right, last time. Last time I'll do that. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, he's made a lot of money. He's made a lot of money holding yeah. a clipboard. Yeah, best job in hey, sports. That's a good one. Be. That's good. Please sign me up. Do you think? It, do you think whenever the quarterback goes down, he gets like this panicked feeling? It's like, oh no, I'm not not. I don't know what this. No, Chase is a cool customer. Okay, he's a cool customer. He is. He is uh, uh, sticking up for him. All right, another cool customer. Actually, I don't know that anyone's ever described him this way. Kirk Cousins of the Minnesota uh, Vikings. He's going to be around for what was it like thirty something million? It, it just they restructured it, added yeah. some to it. Yes. Um, David Pepping says, "Hey, uh, Chris and Ahmed, love the work you put into breaking down the draft and free agency every year. Kirk Cousins was not the problem last year." So the school kids are happy he is back. So he's sticking up for Kirk Cousins. He's but, not the problem. But he goes, but what was the problem in Minnesota in 2021? Yeah, well, you know, it wasn't Kirk Cousins. Certainly not. You know, and I know we have a question above that from Guy 417 who says, like, what's the real NFL evaluation about Kirk Cousins, yes. right? Because Twitter's 50-50 on him. The first talked off, about quarterback. Don't listen to Twitter yeah. is what the first thing I would tell you at Guy 417 okay? Don't, you know, you got plumbers there that are evaluating him what's that wrong, have never why, seen why, a player. What's wrong with plumbers? Ever in their life. They can't evaluate football I would tr- I would trust a plumber over more professions. Plumber probably played football. Well, you're probably right about that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Good point. Yeah. Good point. Give, Still me doesn't a banker. Know, no, Give me a banker now. Still no. doesn't mean they know jack diddly squad okay yeah but um you know i i think with um here's the evaluation you talk to really good offensive coordinators or bright minds they like kirk cousins because they go wait he's gonna run my offense and make all the throws you talk about guys that want to rely on quarterbacks to make more plays with their physical ability they're not going to love kirk cousins so it's a little bit of a mixed bag that way the mcveighs the shanahan's of the world the Kevin O'Connells who believe in their system and believe they're going to be able to coach you to things to read things that other coaches aren't and they're going to make you better. They like Kirk Cousins. They do. You know, Kirk Cousins, yes, he's not the guy that, hey, nobody's open, the pass protection broke down, hey, guys, no worries, jump on my back, I'll carry the team. That's not who he is. He needs some system help. There's no doubt. But if he's in a system with a little talent around him, he can take advantage of just about all that's there to be had. He can. And that's where he's good. You know, as far as the Vikings and what was wrong with them last year, you know, offensively, I look at it and go, going in the right direction. You know, they are. You know, I don't love their offense – like they're another team where you I think you've heard me say, like if they can't run the ball and they have to rely down on just a drop back pass game, I don't love that aspect, but that should change now with Kevin O'Connell. So that's cool. Defensively was their real issue last mm-hmm. year. Which now, they improved. They improved. Upon, I mean, they were like worst in the league the uh, year yeah, before. Yes, yes. But yeah, they had some unfortunate injuries. You yeah. know, Kendrick was hurt for a little bit. Anthony Barr was hurt for a little bit. They got some guys aging. Michael per- Pierce wasn't as good. Daniel Hunter, their best player on defense, hurt his neck and was out for the year. You know, their secondary was kind of being flipped over that way. So, you know, the defense was really the issue I looked at more than anything on that side of the ball. And and I think that, you know, was really the, the thing that I look at as the problem with their team. All right. Kirk Cousins and the Vikings trying to get – remember it was like the long stretch where they were the only team in football who had a more than seven – point lead in all their games up until like week 10 sure it's like they were getting out to leads they could have won a lot more they could have been a playoff team last year they I mean, were if, i mean they were very close they, they were, did lose to my detroit lions but they well, were they were close yeah they were and you know i mean had some heartbreakers and some things were in some games where you go you know again i know they lost but damn Gosh, that was a tough way to lose that football game. Dalvin Cook looked like he was on his right cheek when they called the fumble against the Bengals. It's a chip shot field goal against the Cardinals. They missed that. Boom. You know, they're one where I think the offense is a little bit better than the numbers would say. And then they made the defense, which was still towards the bottom of football, a little bit better than what it looked because, you know, they could control the clock, run the ball, make some plays that way in the pass game, be explosive. Um, so, yeah, it's the defense that I looked at as the thing that's got to be fixed up there. All right, a couple more questions here from the homies. 
as uh, we're running out of breaking news, and I ruined it by putting yep. Chase Daniels in the breaking yep, news the category. Uh, another quarterback question, this one from Lazy Brahmin. Lazy Brahmin says, should the Seahawks trade for Minshew or stick to Locke or draft someone? There was a report that yeah. that they're looking at Drew Locke is not just like a throw-in. Uh, I guess they're evaluating him as a potential fallback option maybe, yeah, but what right. do they do? See where it goes? I mean, Locke has starting caliber physical talent. It's just, can he not do dumb things? Can he take care of the football? Can you trust him to be consistently a machine at quarterbacking the the football team? So yeah, they got to look at that. I, I bet you they're thinking about maybe giving him a legit chance. But I would be, I would think they are one of the teams to look out for to to maybe draft a quarterback too. Yeah. You know, again, I mean, they're they're they have no first round pick right because of the Jamal Adams trade. But you know, do they look to? You know, second round, I don't know, maybe if there's somebody on the board late in the first they liked, I wouldn't be shocked if Seattle went the young quarterback, rookie contract thing, let's build the team and try to do it like we did with Russell Wilson again. You know, again, they're definitely a team you look at and go, man, there's limited options out there. I'm going to be interested to see what they do. Um, they did make some moves, re-sign Quadre Diggs, yeah. Quadre Diggs to a three-year deal, re-sign Will Disley, their tight end. Good. Even though they got Noah, Noah Fant, they got some good tight ends. There. Yeah, they got they got Noah Fant. They got the Shelby Harris from that trade. Got it. You know, and uh, Diggs is a really good football player. I mean, one of the best things they got going about their football team is their safety tandem. So why ruin that? And he's you know free safety, you know heat seeking missile, and uh, yeah, I really like him. I think it's a good signing by them. They don't have Bobby Wagner anymore. No, Barrett agenda says how good, how much of a difference maker is Bobby Wagner at his age? Any teams you could think of that could make the most impact on, that he can make the most yeah, impact Yeah, no, on. he's he's still really good. Do I look at him as one of, like, the most five physically gifted running or linebackers in football anymore? No, I don't. But, like, it hasn't fallen far off, too far off for, for Bobby Wagner. You know, the thing is, and what you're seeing here in free agency, none of the old guys got signed yesterday, right? None of the old guys. You didn't see any of the guys that are in their really 32, 33, the Chandler Jones, the Tyrone Matthews, none of them. Because everybody, it's it's they're risky. Von Miller, right? Those are guys. Terrence Armstead, way to go, right? These are guys where everybody kind of wants to like wait. Let's see if you know they're high priced aging veterans. Do we really want to spend all that money? Do we really trust that they won't? You know, JJ Watt us, right? We're gonna pay you all this money, even though you got a little injury history. Oh wait, you're injured after we paid you all this money. I'm really surprised by that. You know, that, that to me, no, is a real thing that's on teams' radars right now. Right. Is the getting burned with the veteran third contract? Wait, we paid a ton of money for this guy because he's got a name, but now we're f-ed over because he's only played five games for us again, and we paid all that money. That's that's something uh, I think you saw yesterday. What was the question you asked me? I totally lost my train of thought there. Bobby Wagner is oh, he a different speaker? Well, yes. Yes, Bobby Wagner is going to be starting for some defense in, in football this year. Who's that going to be? You know, that I don't know. I, 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 gotta, I guess I got to evaluate that a little bit. But still really good football player, no doubt. Do I put him in the class of Foyaside Aluakon or Ro- Roquan Smith or Devin White or Fred Warner or Darius Leonard? No, I don't. But, you know, that next crop of guys, uh, he'd be in that conversation. I mean, every GM is just afraid that they're going to turn into a pumpkin, right? That, At a certain that's point, it it's just like you got nothing that's for That's what it is. That's exactly what it is. You get scared. When you get to players in year 9, 10, 11, 12 – you just go, man. You know, how many years can we skirt by with the? Are we gonna be get the injury bug guy now? Is it yeah. gonna finally hit? That, that's what's scary about that. Let alone if they've had injuries before, which Wagner has not, which should help him out. I'm nervous to do this because I don't. Yeah, all right. He already did it. If you come with some Chase Daniel crap or like third string quarterback crap, I'm I'm getting got a running back. Okay, J D McKissick. Okay, that's not bad. Right, that was worth that was worth the noise. Weapon. Two year, $7 million contract with the Buffalo Bills. Ooh. Your boy, my Blue. Blue. Got a weapon. Another weapon. Yeah, good. Uh, it's, it's, you know, it's, a, it's what he is. This is a weapon. Devin Singletary ish, right? Going to have real value in the pass game. Uh, again, they, you know, got a quarterback that can move in a little bit and he can do the speed sweeps, reverses. You can put him. Singletary is not a free agent, right? Am I wrong about that? He might be a free agent. He is not. not. So that's it's an interesting pairing. 
But I think it gives him another guy that yeah comes out of the backfield and can be a real pass option. The Bills have re-signed Isaiah McKenzie. Love they that. signed Mitch Morse to an extension, Love keeping that. their center around. Yep. Signed Roger Saffold to a one-year deal. I thought that was a good one, too. So, Value signing, getting up there in age, can't command a lot of money, but still a good player, Roger Saffold, like that. And Derek Rudolph wants to know, who would you like to see the Bills target in free agency? Thoughts on Jarvis Landry, the rumors, and if you think he would be a good fit there. I don't like that. Oh, I don't. You don't like I that. Don't. I don't. I'm not. You know, I. <sighs> Let me say. I mean, you know, listen, I know well, Gabriel Davis is good. Stefan Diggs is good. McKenzie's your jitterbug weapon, reverses. Let's throw a shallow cross and see if he can make people miss and run another 20 yards. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, I was one clamoring last year for, like, I want another big-time receiver. I want another guy out there that's, like, you know, scary that way. That, to me, is what they need a little bit. You know, I, I would like to see them get a guy like a Valdez Scantling mm, or somebody like that. Stretch the field. Not the guy that you got to throw the ball 80 times a game to, the guy or 80 times a year, the guy that you throw maybe 40 or 50 times to, but when you throw it to him, defenses go, oh, crap. It's they're going to him. You know, that that to me is what they need. That's what I would like to see. That and then as I've said all along, a, 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 a pass rusher difference maker. And I know that they got some young guys coming up the ranks that they're looking at. Or, a, or another corner difference maker. To me, they're missing one other piece there just to go, okay, wait, I feel like personnel-wise now they can match up with any team in the AFC. Right. Right. All right. I mean, that makes sense. Yeah. Valdez Scantling, you're talking up his value. Well, he might I, get a big deal if someone listens to this to podcast. I didn't mean to just bring him. I'm just, in theory, that guy, right? That's what I'm trying to kind of say more you than mean, anything. Yeah. The, yeah. The, the, the guy that, you different know. Different type. The different the, the type. Different receiver, type. Yeah. You got Diggs who can do everything, who can go deep. You got Gabriel Divas, who's more of a size, contested catch, work the middle of the field. Jitterbug McKenzie. Now, all right. You know, we can't send digs deep all the time. That's not what Gabriel Davis, Davis is really meant to do. You need to find that guy that can, yeah, to me, that'd be that guy's scary a little bit. I'm trying to look right now if there's uh, anybody on the free agent list that, that makes sense that way, you know, other than Marquez Valdez-Scantling. You know, Will Fuller-ish type of guy. Not necessarily saying that kind of guy, but somebody like that. You got the point. Okay. You uh, got it. Last question. What? Jersey Freshest. Jersey wants, Freshest. Wants to know. Ooh, I like it. Original Market Basket in Wyckoff. Oh. Or Jumbo Market Basket in Franklin Lakes. Now, Ooh. this is a... This is a, this is a hometown thing. Delicatessen. Okay. New Jersey? Right. This is New Jersey. This is Franklin Lakes, Wyckoff. Ooh, Pete's, Jumbo. Pete's ju wife the, votes for Jumbo Market right. Basket. Right. Well, Pete's wife went to my high school. She went to high, she went to uh, same high school I did. She's from Wyckoff, New Jersey. Okay. I went to... I'm Franklin Lakes. See, my town gets split up even though the school's in our town yeah they split our town up and let another full town go to our school and half our town gets split up it's the dumbest shit ever okay. but that's the way they do it market baskets like you know the high-end you know grocery store oh it's, it's like a, a gourmet store. grocery get store okay. right get it like that it's like you know like a whole foods dean and deluca's you know maybe even a little more specialized than whole foods but a lot like that right okay. premium stuff the original market basket white cough small and a little small shopping center it's nice it doesn't beat the jumbo market basket in franklin lakes no it doesn't so i'm going jumbo market basket in franklin lakes but if i want to Italian hero? I yeah. don't go to either one of those places. What? I go to La Strada in Midland Park. Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You got to trust the people who know how to make those type of sandwiches. And my Italian friends at La Strada know how to make some Italian heroes. Oh, my gosh. I'm so hungry. Forget right now. about I it. Would take, hey. I would drive there. How long would it take me to drive there right uh, now? 50 minutes from here. 50? It's the best, best sub sandwich you'll ever get. I bought it for the whole team, the Buccaneers, one year. Yeah. I got like 140 sandwiches from La Strada Delicatessen. They have them down in Tampa? Or you no, had I, them we were playing the Jets. Oh. And I, they came and delivered them to the team. Yeah. I had the team like, oh my gosh, this is the best sandwich I've ever had in my life with a 
is this? It was amazing. I got more praise for that than I did in my play Whoa. on the field. <laughs> were you starting at the? Were you the starter? Uh, at I the was time? just about to be the starter. I was the backup. Did so. that clinch it? You think? Like the team was like, all right, all right, this screw Brad cool. Johnson. This guy's bringing in sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> didn't hurt. Probably didn't hurt. Yeah, you talk right. about you know, win the locker room. Yeah, yeah, it does help win the locker room. It does right. right? When Simeon Rice walks back to the back of the bus and is like, dog, 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 whoa, this. <laughs> So, like that, that got me major props. It really That's did. Good. That's good. Now we know how yeah. the era began. The Sims era in the NFL began with those sandwiches. Yeah, good baby. Uh, All right. Two things to show you right. as we go. So it looks like, what? what is this, uh, Pete? It looks like the Cowboys. This is freezing <laughs> uh, cold takes. Oh, my god! Cowboys had tweeted Randy See, Gregory is staying in Dallas. This makes me believe. How, how does that happen? It makes me believe what I said is what happened. You know, again, I don't know this, but – I've been around football my whole life. I'm betting the Broncos told the agent, let us get one more crack. We might be able to blow the doors off your player. And so he said yes to Dallas with not getting an offer, thinking, okay, here's a tentative offer. I'll take it. The agent calls Denver and said, this is what they're offering. It looks like he's probably going to go back. And they one-upped it to where Randy was like, I can't turn that down, even though I told maybe the Cowboys I would go there. Well, uh, how, what would prevent that from happening with other deals that are agreed? Because no one can sign right now, right? No, you right. can't sign. Right. So what would prevent that from happening with any other deal? No, no, it would. nothing prevents it. It's just going to take – it takes every now and then the rare agent team – you know, relationship and a team that's willing to kind of do that and just kind of like, wait, we're we're not going to make the offer or our best offer until we have to. Right. Uh, that 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 to me looks the way the way it's lining up there. And we put you on the spot too with the AFC West. Woo! Remember, we asked you yeah. who you would pick if it was the field versus the Chiefs. The field. The field's the homies, winning. The homies have picked the field, 69.5%. Yeah. So they'll take the Broncos, the Chargers. Like, really, that's what I want to ask the homies. That's where I want to ask the homies. You really, if you really had to put your money down, you're really going to put it down on the other three teams and not go with Mahomes and company? You get three teams. I know. And I if, know. Mahomes, if Mahomes But, damn, gets- I've been watching football for the last four years, and that one team ends up in the AFC Conference Finals every year. <laughs> but I remember midway through the year you were like, there are problems. There are yeah, problems here for the were. Chiefs. I know. There were some issues. There was. There was. There was probably a time last year where you thought maybe there was a chance they weren't going to win the division. But there was. It was risky there for a little while. It was. No uh, doubt. That was good. That was exhaustive. I feel like we talked basically about we didn't talk about your Giants that much. But no, there's nothing to talk about right now. Yeah. Yeah, they got nothing. They made no moves yet, right? They, no, they got Mark Glowinski. Oh, Glowinski. Yeah, okay. A little and guard John action. Feliciano. There you go. All right, See, so Pete's they're like, they're getting on. some. Well, they're they're building they're building some some depth on the offensive line. That's what that is. Those are two guys that Gowinski could start. If not, he's going to be a high end high end backup. Feliciano probably really the same way. Look at it that way. Didn't talk about the the Bucks or Rams, but you know they get they get enough love. Yeah, uh, a couple of moves, offensive line for the Rams. Uh, Bucks got some things going on, but we'll probably talk about them at some other point. So yeah, that was good. Day one in the books, and we got a good amount of day two talk in there with the breaking news. Yeah, we got a lot in. We definitely Sorry did. about the Chase Daniel. Yeah, but I you feel dropped like the I, ball there. I, I, but I, our trust is still strong. It is still strong. It is. I mean, you wore the red pants today, and that's what matters most, okay, <laughs> on our first day back. Yeah, exactly. Those are the important things. All right, so here's the deal. All right, uh, Thursday, I got to go see the in-laws in Florida. All right, oh. sorry to say. It's a real pain in my ass. I'm not even lying. <laughs> it's a real pain in my ass. Um, so I'm going to do that. I'm not going to be doing a live podcast on Thursday. We're going to take some clips yeah. of some other things. PFT, you know, we're going to add that on the podcast. Monday, I'm back, and I'm not going anywhere for a long time. And we will start doing draft rankings, draft and specifically quarterback rankings on Monday. Monday. You're going to be here for that? That's Monday. Okay, you'll be here. Ahmed will be here. So there you go. That's it. What Keep sending the questions. What if your daughter plays the end of this podcast in front of your in-laws? Over the weekend, I don't have. There's no chance of that happening. Okay. So none. I know. And my wife doesn't listen to the podcast either. So screw you, honey. You're not hearing this. <laughs> you like that? All right. No, I don't. All right. Very nervous. She understands my feelings about her in-law, her parents, anyways. Um, all right, everybody. And now so do the and now so do the homies. And now me. the homies do too. Yes, yes. Uh, I they they need to be better. Peace out, everybody out there. Be good, Ahmed. You the man. Clap, clap it up. up. Yo, yo, what's up? 
Come on, man. Subscribe on YouTube to Chris Sims Unbutton Podcast. I need you. Please hit the subscribe button, please. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.